is when that base is a letter, a variable, we do okay with this rule. So for instance, if it's x to the third times x to the second, we're pretty good with x to the fifth. What I do notice happens is if your base is a number, like 3 to the third times 3 to the second, a lot of times kids will write 9 to the fifth, which is incorrect. Okay? It is still keep the same base, and really the reason for that is going to come back to PEMDAS. You're not doing multiplication in the same, and multiplying 3 times 3 in the same step that you're supposed to be following exponent rules. Exponent rules come first, and then if there was some sort of multiplication, we would address it. But the exponent rule kind of takes care of that multiplication. Okay? Um, common base subdivision, same idea. Um, one thing I would say is just be careful of double signs. So if I have like x to the fifth divided by x to the negative second, just be careful of that because 5 minus negative 2 is 5 plus 2 is 7. Good. Um, trying to think what else. And I guess if you're going to get a negative number, so another example would be if I have like x to the 7th, over x to the 10th, 7 minus 10 is negative 3. Let that go. It, it, it's, your answer is still on the numerator. It's just x to that power. Then we will address the negative exponent when we get over here and we get to the negative exponent rule. Um, but whatever, when, whenever you do that subtraction, your common base to whatever power is definitely on the numerator. Next one is the power to power rule. So x to the a power, then to the b power. If you ever hear yourself saying to the, pow to the third, to the fourth, kind of double like that, we multiply that straightforward. Um, anything to the zero power is one. Um, so usually I would leave all these rules blank and see how many of you knew that. But people will say zero. Like, something 3,000 to the zero power they'll say is zero, but that's obviously not true. Yeah, question? Why is it one? How does it just turn one? Um, that's a great question. So I'll tell you. Um, if you think about how exponents work, like what's 2 to the third power? 8. 2 to the second? 2 to the first? 2. When you keep drawing back, what's the what is happening? You're dividing by two. You're di right. So if you're moving forward, you keep multiplying by an additional two. If you're moving backwards, you keep dividing by an additional an additional two. So as soon as you get to zero and negative exponents, the thought process of an exponent truly meaning that you take that number and multiply it by itself that many times kind of goes out the window. How can you multiply 2 by itself 0 times? How can you multiply 2 by itself negative 3 times? Like, it just doesn't make any sense to think about exponents that way. So, you know, there's a reason when, when you guys start any math topic, you only are get, given, like, level A of understanding. So when you first dealt with exponents, it was you take that base and you multiply it by itself such and such times, which isn't wrong, it's just not the full story, because what happens when you get to negative exponents, we have a whole new set of rules. So if you're going backwards, and you obviously are following divide by 2, divide by 2, you get 1. And even beyond that, which is kind of neat, if you go backwards again, if you divide 1 by 2, you get a half. And you should know that for a negative exponent rule, that is the rule. You bring the base to the denominator and make it positive. What's that? Right, right, right. Um, so, that's why. Um, good question. And then on the last one, a negative exponent. If something has a negative exponent, whether it's 1 or anything else, um, I actually probably would prefer to write this rule as x to the negative a power. You move that base to the denominator and then rewrite it with the positive power. And... To be truthful, if it starts in the num in the denominator, which a lot of times they will, whatever that is that's being raised to the negative exponent, if it's already in the denominator, you move it to the numerator and it becomes that positive exponent. 
The only rule I don't really see, and I ha there is the power to power rule, so, and it's kind of a little bit tied into that, so I'm going to write it underneath that, is if you've got, let's say, x, y over z, and raise it to the a power. And I know you guys know this, but if, it, if an entire set of parentheses is raised to a power, each and every term in there gets raised to that power. So this is x to the a, y to the a, over z to the a. Okie doke. All right, so um, on these first four examples, starting with 1a, oh, who can take a stab at it for me? How about Val? Perfect, so tell me what to write. Which is? Mm, raising to the third power is different than multiplying by three. You've got to multiply negative three by itself three times. So, very good. Okay, next. Mm, you added them right? To get 7? 4 plus 3? That's when they have common bases. Like x to the 4th times x to the 3rd, that would be x to the 7th. This is more of x to the 4th to the 3rd. Very good. See the difference side by side like that? Perfect. So there's a parenthesis rule and a power to power rule all wrapped up. In B, when you're multiplying two monomials, you sort of multiply corresponding parts. You are not distributing anything, right? There's not pluses and minuses separating the X from the Y. So it's not like I'm distributing the negative 7. That would be if they were polynomials. This is just two monomials. You multiply the coefficients to get 14. X times X to the fifth. What's that, Faith? Yep, very good. So we know that there's technically a 1 on that x. And then y to the 4th times y to the 6th is y to the 10th. And that's, Val, you see how there's y's in both spots there? So that's kind of the case of addition. Good? <clears throat> Same thing if you're doing division. Monomial divided by a monomial. You just divide corresponding pieces. So take a stab at that for me, Andrew. Perfect. Yep. So corresponding divisions, the, the coefficients get divided like regular numbers, because that's what they are. Exponents get subtracted because you're dividing common bases. The double negative hits, hits kind of all of it. And then we still have a follow-up step here because that produced a negative exponent. We got rid of one of them from the original problem, just naturally kind of took care of itself, but then we created another one. So the only piece of this that has the negative exponent, lots of times people, maybe not in this case you wouldn't fall for it because something about the negative in front of that 7 would withhold you from that, but only move the piece that has the negative exponent. The, the negative 7 is not being raised to the negative 4th power. So just that moves, we get negative 7y to the 12th over x to the 4th. And keep in mind that when things are fully simplified, and you should write this at the top, you should have no negative exponents in your final answer. This is how you'll know on an open response that it's completely done. No negative exponents, uh, no common basis, so no variable essentially, no variable can show up more than once, and no parentheses would be the other one. 99% of the time we don't have parentheses. The only time parentheses really would ever be in a final answer would be if the base of a coefficient was a negative number. For example, if your final answer was like, well, let's do it this way. If I gave you another example, I'll call it E. If it was like 17 x squared 
Well, let's do negative 17. y cubed to the third power. If that was the original problem. Oh, you guys have your calculators. But even still, sometimes your calculators won't get as high as a problem. Maybe if I made that negative 170. What happens on your calculator if you do negative 170 to the third power? Oh, it gives it to you. Well, what if I raise it to the tenth power? Some numbers do get too big. Okay, that's too big for your calculator. Does everyone know what that means? Sci yeah, scientific notation. So it kind of gets too big for your calculator. So you're not going to write that number out. Instead, you're going to actually write, if your base is a negative number, you want to keep your base in parentheses just to contain that negative number. So that would be like one of the only cases where you would have parentheses in your final answer. But now thinking that you guys have calculators, I'm not used to pre-calc having calculators, um, you'll probably never see parentheses in your final answer. And then D. Does anyone know what maybe a shortcut would be for D, or a conversation we haven't ha yet had? What would, you, what would you do first with this? Flip it, okay? So if you have a fraction raised to a negative power, there's really two ways of going about this. One way, and I'll do it kind of the longer way first, the non-flipping it way, would be to just start raising everything to the negative power. So 4 to the negative third, x squared to the negative third would become x to the negative sixth, and then y to the negative third. And then your next step from there would be just handle all those negative exponents. Now because everything there has a negative exponent, everything's sort of switching locations. This denominator piece is going to move up top. And these numerator pieces, 4 to the third, oh boy, 4 times 4 is 16, times 4 is 64. And then x to the sixth. Whereas you saw everything become a negative exponent, therefore everything had to switch. So sometimes what we can do just to kind of bypass that term by term process is if you have a fraction raised to a negative power or you could just reciprocate that and, and put it to the positive third. So what he said by that flipping would look like this. You just flip the fraction and the negative three becomes three and then you cube everything. Y to the third, 4 to the third again gets us to 64, and then X to the sixth. So in this particular step, I don't know that one was any quicker than the other. They both took two steps, but it, it can be a big time saver in some instances. Okay, any questions? So that's it, because we're not going to do rational exponents until tomorrow. So you already have your homework worksheet, because like I said, they mistakenly copied back to back. So you have really the rest of the period, which is a significant amount of time, to do all of the odds. So again, separate sheet of paper. I will throw the answers up on the board.